Good evening. What do you say we do a feel-good version of uh, a Cowboys fish report? It was feel good. We're going to have to get some uh, bullshit out of the way first, but let's get there. I'm Mike Fisher, your trusted and trusted reporter. This is the fishbowl. That is a star. Tonight, Sugar throws a dart and picks a winner, and Ed Tutal Jones, the autographed Cowboy jersey, my pleasure to give it to you now that we've hit 70,000 subscribers. What? I know 70,000 subscribers here. And uh, so, so yes, for the next uh, seven minutes, you can still type in too tall and then the state in which you live. She's on pins and needles, throwing a dart. I don't know how she does it, but we'll get there. This is going to be a feel-good version of the program, first of all, because uh, of too tall. And second of all, because after I shovel a bunch of bullsh, I'm going to give you C.D. Lamb nice news. Uh, there's been this phenomenon over the course of time on, on TV news where, boy, it's all blood and guts, and if it bleeds, it leads, and that kind of thing on the news. And then every once in a while, there'll be a movement. And it usually manifests itself in morning television, where it's like, good morning, Birmingham, and it's a happy, smiley show. I want to do a happy smiley show just this once. Watch me. It's doable. <laughs> but first, uh, this is the fishbowl. That is the star. And inside the star, of course, ever since the Cowboys lost to the Packers, there's been a great deal of negativity. And I think most of it's justified. Um, some of it is crazy conspiracy. In fact, the first crazy, I'm going to do this off the top of my head. I'm going to rattle this off. All the crap. It's almost uh, like the Billy Joel song. We didn't start the fire. And then you could go through all this stuff. It starts with the Cowboys lost to the Packers. And not only should Mike McCarthy be fired, but did Dan Quinn not try hard enough to win? Because did you see him be really nice to that Washington fan a couple? Okay, so it's gone It's gone from the ridiculous to the, well, not sublime, because there hasn't been very much sublime about this offseason. I'm going to go just around the, the whole room here, around the Cowboys room. So you got, should Mike McCarthy be fired? You got, did Dan Quinn throw the game? You have, of course, Dak Prescott. Can he ever win, a, really win in the playoffs? And should we pay him as if he's going to someday do it? Um, last couple of days, the local newspaper writes about these uh, flashpoints in DAC negotiations that are about to come. This is negative. There's no flashpoints in the DAC negotiations. You know why? Because there's no DAC negotiations. How can they have a flashpoint? There's nothing. The owner announced that there would be nothing. That could change. But that's what he said. There's your quarterback, running back. You had Derrick Henry saying, I, I, I would have been interested in coming to Dallas. And they didn't even call him. And you may now, and this will be about as this this will be about as feel good as it's going to get in terms of a free agent signing, I'm afraid. You may bring back Ezekiel Elliott, if only because it feels good. which isn't a good enough reason. You had not one, but two offensive linemen leave. And you're crossing your fingers that you're going to survive in the offensive line. You've got big questions about Schoon, and they don't go away. Uh, and and I, I hope he becomes something. Wouldn't that be great? Seems like a nice kid, a big body. But there's no sign that Schoon is going to justify his second round pick from last year. Defensive line. You lose a bunch of pass rushers. Are they replaceable? If Sam Williams gets his head screwed on, sure. Mozzie Smith. Well, at least he'll still be learning from Jonathan Hankins. No, Jonathan Hankins has gone to one of the 10 or so Cowboy starter slash rotational players who are gone. They bring in one. And they lose 10 in free agency. Hey, Mozzie Smith's going to be okay. Yeah. 
there's no sign that Mozzie Smith's going to be good. Linebacker, you sign Eric Kendricks? Yes. But Leighton Vandresh thing? Sad. And it officially comes on the same day of Tyron Smith's departure to New York. Sad. Defensive backfield. Well, at least we're going to sign Gilly. I'm not sure you are. I'm not sure you are at all. What about uh, uh, Curse? There have been no overture, overtures there. Uh, what, what you know is any guy, whether he's on this team or outside the building, who's asking for something more than a one-year contract, they're telling him, call us later. Call us when you're ready to take a one-year contract. Diggs. Well, he was never coming here, but when he didn't, when he came to Texas, but didn't come here, well, uh, for some people, that was another, ah, for crying out loud. So on and on and on we go. You got a Jerry lawsuit, you got a Dak Prescott lawsuit. And on and on and on we go. The draft will come. We said this the other day about how Godfather three style, they pull you back in and they will. The draft will pull you back in. It'll be interesting, has a chance to be productive. Maybe they'll nail it. They, uh, at the very top of the draft, they usually do. That's all the negative stuff. And it's a lot of it that I can think off the top of my head. Am I missing anything? Trying to go through the coaching staff. Uh, Joe Witt, of course, was going to go. You retain Al Harris. I know the public is excited about that. Mike Zimmer's here. Uh, oh, but he's on, presumably, a one-year contract like everybody else, making the whole organization a lame duck organization. And we have these gurgling, burbling rumors that people inside the building don't have a lot of faith in what the Joneses are doing right now. They don't seem very inspired by it all. So there's this mountain of negativity. And then here comes a series of C.D. Lamb stories. One more troublesome than the next. The first one is created by Jerry, who says, paraphrasing, uh, we got to measure whether or not that C.D. Lamb at $30 million a year is really worth five or six other players that you could get. That's what he said. And so naturally, the media not being irresponsible starts saying, well, you know, Jerry said it. All right, what 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 can you get for CeeDee Lamb? Which comes on the heels of Jerry said it. What can you get in trade for Jack Prescott? Which comes in the same bundle with, well, now there's negative things being whispered about Micah Parsons. What are they doing? You're really going to say goodbye? To maybe your three best players? That's the strategy? So along comes C.D. Lamb. And I believe this was Sunday with TMZ. And they found him in the airport or whatever. So this isn't C.D. Lamb's full reaction to all the stuff. He can't possibly be aware of all the stuff that's out there. But there is a, this trade idea. Well, you know, could you trade C.D. Lamb for a one and a three? Tomorrow on this program, could you trade Dak Prescott to the Raiders? That one has gotten such, that speculative media, media proposal has gotten such legs that now it's talked about on national talk shows. Like it's, act, like it's a real idea. Well, what could you get for Micah? Well, what could you get for Dak? Well, what could you get for CeeDee Lamb? And... Uh, the Dallas News today wrote a story, and it was interesting the way they did it. 
And because I've been doing this for 40 years, I, I, I have some insight into how and why you do this. But they basically wrote a news story saying that C.D. Lamb is going to hold out. And then the story says, we contacted the agent and the agent would not comment. Yeah, then, yeah. then how do you know he's going to hold out? Now, make sure you understand this. It would not be uncommon or unconventional. These are voluntary workouts and you're not even, you're in the weight room. You're not even doing any of that. So if a player wants to call attention to his contractual situation, not participating in voluntary workouts is a fairly innocuous way of doing that. And maybe C.D. Lamb will do that. I'm not going to report that he's going to do it. However, as logical as it might be, there's precedent for it. I'm even going to suggest to you in a minute that a C.D. Lamb holdout, even though it would be negative news, would be a good thing. But I can't report that C.D. Lamb's going to hold out because no, nobody's told me that. I can't report that they're going to trade C.D. Lamb. First of all, nobody's told me that. Second of all, I just think fundamentally the concept is ridiculous. Here's why. One of the whole points of the NFL, of winning in the NFL, is because it's a, it's a player's league. incredible player. Now, you need bonding and you need coaching and you need luck and all that. Incredible players. Big time players win the games. Hadn't happened often enough yet for Micah or Lamb or Dak, admittedly. But, you know, I, I, Jerry seems to be pushing this, you know, as I've called it, this you know, Rocky Balboa, Rudy at Notre Dame, bad news bears, Hoosiers thing. We're going to do less with more. It's not, it's not how it works in reality. In reality, Rudy got his ass kicked by real football players. Right? In reality, the bad news bears coach, Walter Matthau, was a drunk. He probably didn't show up for a bunch of the games. That's the that's the reality of it. There is not there's not really a Rocky. You know, Sylvester Stallone in person, he's thick. He's not even tall enough, barely, to be a heavyweight champion. It's not real. C.D. Lamb's response to TMZ. And I won't get into all the, you know, he, he said a few things. By the way, uh, uh, the uh, Bree Fund, the Super Chat tonight, Dean Graham, $5 pitch in. Last couple of seasons, 88 and four. We're doing something together. Cooks and Tobert last season off too. Yes, that's a great point. E even if C.D. Lamb says, I'm going to hold out a volunteer, voluntary weightlifting I can virtually guarantee you he'll be in the DAC yard up the road, just up the road from the star. Guarantee it. They will, and, and by the way, Brendan Cook says they're already doing it. So CD Lamb does this quickie interview, surely with. The, some of these rumors in his head and says, I, I will be with the Cowboys. I'm playing for the Cowboys. 
and a contractual disaster. By the way, he's under contract for this year at 18, almost $18 million a year, 17.99 million. He's under contract that, that registers as underpaid. That's inarguable. He's a $30 million wide receiver. That's the way this thing is going. I believe that, that, uh, that Jerry Jones is wrong in wondering, uh, Mr. Mike, couldn't I go get six, $5 million players and better be better. No, no, you can't get you six Jalen Tolberts wouldn't be better than one CD lamb. No, Jerry, it would not. Um, it's wearing a little, Sean Shreve, uh, boy, that Michael Parsons is wearing a little thin around here. Then work with him. Don't talk about him. Boy, that Dak Prescott, we don't know. Well, then you screwed up. If you don't know about Dak Prescott after eight years, that's not on him. It's on you. He's busting his ass. You know he is. But you, Cowboys management, are the ones that flip-flop every year, month, week, day on Dak Prescott. Make up your mind and roll with it. To C.D. Lamb's credit, he's made up his mind. All right, Marcia just sent me the winner. Who wants to win the Tutal Jones jersey? And the winner is, are we going to Alabama? We're going to Shadow Wolf. Woo! Good one. That's a damn good winner. Now, for the 70,000 people that are saying, hey, wait a minute, I would, I'd like to win. You'll get your chance. You'll get your chance over the course of this week to win some other fantastic stuff. Uh, somebody go uh, elbow Shadow Wolf and tell him, go check the mail pretty soon. Uh, DG, what or who made 11 not go with Scott? I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't know why Micah Parsons decided to abort his mission to go on TV with the disreputable cockroach Skip Bayless. I don't know if it, my initial thought was they had lost the game, right? And it was like, I don't feel like going. That's, that, that doesn't look right. That doesn't feel right. That was my initial reaction. I would love to think that somebody got went to Micah and said, listen, uh, talking too much is, is a problem, but talking with that guy, you will catch a disease. And so the plug was pulled. I've had that conversation, by the way, with uh, the handful of, not very many Cowboys. Uh, they're all former Cowboys, by the way, who visit with Skip. And I've had a conversation with him. It, it, you think it's going to be good for you. It's not. It won't work. He, he, it, he's a hemorrhoid. And it'll attach itself to you. I said it to Bryce Butler, last guy I said it to. I think I said it to Orlando Skandrick. So, in summary, this has been bad, that's been rough, that's been negative, that sucks. Somebody around here had to put a smiley face on this. Uh, Ronald, if you want to know the this, the origins of Skip Bayless and what I know about it, there is a video here. It's probably got five, it's probably, it might have 400,000 views. You can find it here. Um, I will tell you this though. Uh, we're doing a research project for reasons that I will release to you someday soon. It's pretty cool. And so I've gone back and read all the books from the 90s. You know, and as I told you the other day, I showed you and told you. There's Jimmy's book. There's um, Jim Dent's book. I've got Jeff Perlman's great book. And yes, obviously I got my book. And I've got Skip's. And the Skip, the Skip Bayless book, the Hellbent book, 
about the Barry Switzer 95 Cowboys deserves to be known as the Skip Accuses Aikman of Being Gay book. And I don't use the word accuses lightly. He does it like he does it like every fifth page. He suggests something once again about how frail Troy is, how sensitive he is. And Skip writes in the book frequently. He says, a lot of people told me that they thought this was going to be a book about Aikman being gay. It's not. And then he, then he writes another page about it. And it's, it's accurate. It's not a book about Aikman being gay. It's not Aikman is gay. It's is Aikman gay. And this asshole knows that's the exact same thing. And the reason I'm told, was told back then, that the publisher said, fine, we'll do another book. What do you got? Is because Skip told them. I got a Is Aikman Gay book. Oh, I've also got Is Aikman a Racist in there. Would you like that? And the three themes of that book, Hellbent, are one, is Aikman gay? Two, is Aikman a racist? And three, Thank God, Skip, and I'm not exaggerating, Skip suggests strongly in this book that, that the key figures of the 95 Cowboys were Jerry, Aikman, Irvin, Switzer, and Skip. And I shit you not. So yeah, uh, I, I, have, I have problems with people that use their bully pulpit to destroy other people's lives with lies for money. Shadow Wolf, congratulations. You're the big winner. More big winners over the course of the week. Uh, tomorrow on the program. Okay, now we got to do the trade deck too. We got to make sense of the trade deck. But at least know this. Somebody around here, and I saw somebody say, F the smiley face. No, no, the smiley face is good. It's a very positive emoji. Send your friend a smiley face. It, first of all, it takes the edge off the bad news you might be giving him. This organization needed somebody to say something honest and nice. Jerry said some things that are nice. <laughs> uh, well, well, we we can win. We, I mean, he Jerry's pretending that the roster is just as good as it was. Rick C. Skip actually claimed that Jimmy asked him about drafting and about the acquisition of Charles Haley, and that is he did indeed he has indeed claimed that, and obviously it's ridiculous. Uh, and furthermore, Jimmy's gone public and said, it's just another one of Skip's lies. It's just, he's just an out, he's, he's outrageous in all the wrong, icky, almost evil ways in the methods that he uses to hurt people for money. If you've never heard my Alexander Wrights, Alexander Wright, they're, they're about, about as sweet a, sweet a kid as ever came through here. And Skip Bayless destroyed him because he needed to write a column in his fax newsletter. Yes, he was faxing out his column to people because nobody would hire him at that time. Go, go get my skip video, you'll see. That's enough of that negativity. I am applauding C.D. Lamb. Somebody had to say something positive and accurate. And management is saying positive things, but they're not necessarily accurate. A lot of people are saying negative things for whatever their motives are. C.D. Lamb is saying something here from the heart. It's fine. I'm a cowboy. I look forward to working with Dak. We're, we're, we're going to be okay. And he means it. So congratulations to two people today. Shadow Wolf who wins the Tutel Jones jersey, and C.D. Lamb.
for getting it right and getting it nice. Fish out. <laughs>